This video is about soldering a Digitrex DZ126 decoder to the analog light board of an Atlas GP40. The instruction should work for pretty much any decoder with the standard color scheme for the wires and any modern split frame DCC ready mechanism. The general idea is to use the space under the light board on the rear of the frame for the decoder and reuse the light board for all the necessary connections. This requires a couple of modifications to the light board first, so I remove the light board from the frame. Sometimes it's possible to get the board out by loosening the screws that keep the frame halves together just a little without the mechanism falling apart. The analog light board has the LEDs for the headlights plus all the necessary connections on it. After the conversion to DCC all the connections run through the decoder so I have to cut a couple of the traces on the board to make that happen. On DC the motor contacts connect directly to the power pickups from the track. To isolate the motor I make four cuts on the light board with a hobby knife. I also widen the cuts a bit to make sure that there is none of the copper trays remaining in the board. The LEDs are wired to directly leverage the polarity of the track power to make the directional lighting work. I want to keep the resistor for the LED, but want to cut out the additional caps on the board so the decoder is only connected to the LED and the resistor. I make cuts before the resistor and directly after the LED on both ends of the board. To make sure that there are no unwanted connections remaining, I go over the contacts and double check with a digital multimeter. Before putting the board back into the frame, I isolate the frame around the motor contact strips with captain tape. It's also possible to solder the decoder directly to the contact strips of the motor, but I'm doing this conversion for a friend of mine and don't want to obstruct the option to use a board replacement decoder later on. So let's pop the board back into the frame and hook up all the connections. The red and black wires go to the track contacts. Red connects to the right rail and black to the left. The paler versions of these colors go to the corresponding motor contact, so orange as pale red goes to the right motor contact and gray as pale black goes to the left motor contact. I bring out the DMM again to make sure that there are no unwanted electrical connections. Now it's time to run the wires to the headlights. With the LEDs, it's important to get the polarity right or they won't come on. The bigger contact is the cathode. On this particular board you can also kinda see half of the LED symbol. The pointy end of the symbol designates the cathode. If you look closely, you can also see that the LED housing has a flat spot on the cathode side. The LED for the front headlight is wrapped in shrink tubing, making it harder to tell which lead is the cathode. But since the LEDs are set up to use track polarity to steer the directional lighting on DC, the polarity has to be the opposite of the polarity of the real light LED. Most decoders, including this one, have the common plus pole on the blue wire, so the blue wire goes to the anode. Since the decoder is sitting right next to the real light, I have a lot of the blue wire left over, so I use that as a jumper wire to the anode of the front headlight. The function output wire then needs to be hooked up to the big cathode side of the LED. The white wire goes to the front light and the yellow wire needs to be soldered to the rear light. On this board, the resistor is on the cathode side of the LED. Other boards might have resistors on the anode side of the LED. Either way, you need to have the resistor in the loop to keep the LED alive. After a quick check to test the installation, the shell can go back on the frame and the conversion to DCC is complete. Let me know in the comments if you found this tutorial helpful or if you have any questions.